Hey, so tonight we're gonna continue our Doctrine series and it's a little special because I asked my friend Sean to collab with me in this topic of the Doctrine of Angels. So before we dig in, I just wanna introduce Sean or AKA Mission Zero. That's his YouTube channel, by the way. If you can, please stop. Go back, to, go back to this video later and subscribe to his channel. That would be amazing. But, but I've known Sean through the Christian YouTube Creator Group in Facebook. And I, and I saw one of his videos. And man, I was amazed with his wisdom and charisma. He's a cloud architecture consultant, lives in Dallas with his wife, Lynn. He loves scuba diving, traveling, and obviously preaching the gospel digitally. Why don't we hear his vision from himself, yeah? Well, thanks, Jurgen. Yeah, like uh, like Jurgen said, my name is Sean, and uh, my channel is Mission Zero. I have kind of two real impetuses behind my ministry. One is this right here: be the youest you you can be. The reason that I think that's important is because the celebrating of your own uniqueness drives the second mission that I have, which is to bring people together. The way that you bond to other people is by recognizing the beauty in diversity. But enough of me rambling, let's get this thing started. So let's talk about the angels. Well, the Bible teaches that God uses a numberless army of angels to help execute His will in heaven and in earth. Their duty is to minister to Christians. Maybe this is where they get the idea of what they call guardian angels. They are like being or spirits that God created before Adam and Eve. And they are not ghosts, right? Hebrews 1.14 says, Are they, and it was referring to angels, not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? So they were made that way. They were made to render service for us Christians. Problem is, there are some angels who fell and rebelled against God and now formed an army of evil under the command of the devil. Jude 6 says, And the angels who did not keep their proper domain left their own abode. He has reserved in everlasting chains under the darkness for the judgment of the great day. And we have to understand that they have a leader and it is the highest angel who fell which is all of us know is satan let's hear about sean on this topic well no discussion of angels can be complete with talking about the most famous angel right one of the first angels he goes by a lot of different names beelzebub lucifer mephistopheles the head demon, the king of hell, the prince of this world, the prince of darkness. But let's talk today about a couple of names that are a little lesser known, the king of Tyrus and the king of Babylon. In Ezekiel 28, Lucifer is referred to as the king of Tyrus for reasons I won't go into here for time. But we are told that he was a cherub, a beautiful cherub, a powerful cherub, the very guardian of the throne of God that he was beautiful and beautifully dressed, and that when he moved, there was music. Quite literally, he was the worship leader of heaven. He led the heavenly host in celebrating God. But the thing about that kind of position is that after a while, you begin to believe that the people are celebrating you. And in fact, this is what happened. Lucifer began to get pride that the angels were responding to his charisma and his greatness. And that spawning of pride snapped him out of God's alignment and he was thrown to earth. Jesus says in the book of Luke that he watched Satan fall as lightning to earth when this happened. This wasn't some like long drawn out battle in heaven, no. He spawned pride and was cast out instantly down to earth where he sat for an unknown amount of time until Adam and Eve come along into the Garden of Eden. And here is where Lucifer earns the name Satan, which is an old Hebrew word that means accuser. It's actually a legal term. And it's because what he did was accuse God of being a charlatan and a power monger. And this is what he used to convince Eve to eat the fruit. In Isaiah 14, we get another name 
for Lucifer, and it is the king of Babylon. And in this story, the Lord is telling Isaiah the final punishment that Lucifer will receive for his accusation. This is an interesting one because it's a piece that almost no one talks about, and I think most people are completely unaware of. And what it says is that he will be cast down to hell. Now, did you catch that? We tend to think about Satan as this pitchfork red dude who is lord over the burning pit of hell. The word hell in Hebrew is the word sheol, and it means the place of the dead. And Lucifer is not in that place. He will be cast there. And when he is, the dead will rise up happy to see him. Because as Isaiah says, you've been brought down to our level now. That's not the story we give of the devil. The story we talk about actually comes from a Sumerian story about this Lord of the pit. The real truth behind Lucifer is he is not a powerful, all-knowing all. No, he is king of nothing. He is the prince of this world. He is, he is a force that has no power but that that we give him. Sure, he can cause thunderstorms and raging hurricanes. He can even take the people that have given over their lives to him and put them as a stumbling block in your way to, to harm you or to attack you. Jesus in John 10 describes Lucifer as the thief. And he says that the thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And that's true. But the important piece about that is that we choose what effect he is allowed to have in our lives. Don't be fooled by the preening little cherub who tells you that you're not worthy of God's love or that God just doesn't care or have time for you or doesn't have the power to sustain you. He is an angel who was made to celebrate God and he let his focus slip. This is the lesson for us, is keep your eyes on God, because that keeps you in proper balance with yourself and with other people. That's the real lesson of the fall of Lucifer, the first and most beautiful angel. Hey, thanks, Sean. That was amazing, man. I told you he's full of wisdom. But I think that wraps up the Doctrine of the Angels. If you have more information that we didn't tackle, please feel free to comment down below. If, or if you have any questions or concern, please do so. And again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I encourage you to go ahead and do that right now so that I will be encouraged to do more videos like this. Thank you, God bless you, and see you in my next video.